Hannah Kaplan, and this is the WCS Wild Audio Podcast, where you'll find reported audio stories covering the latest news and newsmakers from the Wildlife Conservation Society's Global Conservation Program, Zoos and Aquarium, and their many partners. We've got a great show today, so let's get to it. White nose syndrome is a deadly fungus that's wiping out bats across North America. New research makes a case that it's having a direct negative impact on human health, too. WCS Wild Audio's Dan Rosen has the story. There's a lot of unknowns about bats. We're learning new things about them all the time. One thing we do know, as small flying mammals, they shouldn't be able to do what they do and survive. Flight is very energetically expensive. This is Corey Lawson. And I am the director of bat conservation for Wildlife Conservation Society Canada. This dilemma, Corey says, was one of the first things that excited her about studying bats. Here's these little tiny creatures barely able to kind of keep themselves warm, uh, having to fly, use a ton of energy, and yet they're eating insects. And, And insects are not calorie rich. It's a process called torpor which Corey describes as a bit of magic. They use this trick um, where they lower their body temperature, literally let their, their body become whatever temperature their surroundings are. And by doing so, their cellular metabolism, their cellular um, reactions just slow rate right down and don't use much energy. And they can do that every day if they need to. Um, during the winter, they do it for months at a time when there's no insects at all available. And then they're just using a little bit of, you know, the reserved fat day after day in the winter. In the summer, if there's not a lot of insects around, they will do the same thing. Not all bats can afford to drop their temperature low. In order to develop a fetus, Corey says, females need their bodies to be warm. So these bats get a bit resourceful to conserve energy. They'll go find a warm place that will keep their body warm for them. That's why a lot of bats like our attics, for example, nice hot places, the females go there when they want to raise their young. And then they just let the hot attic air keep their bodies warm. They can use very little um, energy then of their of their own fat reserves to develop the fetus and then nurse their young. One of the biggest threats to the bats quarry studies in North America is a deadly fungus called white nose syndrome that impacts bats in the winter when they're hibernating. They go into this deep state of torpor and so they are literally uh, almost like little ice cubes uh, hanging, sometimes even have little um, droplets of water on them because they're in humid areas and the fungus grows really well. Now the bats, because their cellular metabolism is really slowed down to to, to um, almost nothing in the winter, they, they don't have a great immune response, in fact, very little. And so these bats will warm their bodies up, use their precious stored fat to jumpstart their immune systems and they will be trying to groom off the fungus and they literally are getting kind of moldy um, during the winter. And so they keep this process of trying to arouse, warm up, groom, get the immune system functioning. Then they go have to go back into torpor, into this deep hibernation state or they would use up all their fat. This process just keeps repeating itself, Corey explains, until the bats use up all their fat reserves and starve. It's caused mass die-offs and raised alarm bells from scientists like Corey for years. Today, the disease can be found from one North American coast to the other. The only silver lining? Corey says it seems to be moving more slowly out west, where she's based. There's a number of reasons why that could be, and it might be the hibernation um, behaviors of our bats are different here in the west. But nonetheless, it's actually good news, um, because even though it seems like the mortalities are happening, um, the spread is slower, and that's buying us a lot of time to try to figure out if there's something that we can do uh, to uh, slow the spread more or, I mean, ideally reduce the mortalities in general. What we do know, according to new research, is that this crisis is also bad for human health. With fewer bats around to control insect populations, farmers are turning to pesticides. The rise in pesticide use, in turn, is leading to an increase in infant mortality. This is, this is big. You know, this is, I think everybody has sort of known this connection is there, but to be able to actually measure it and point to it um, in in a published paper uh, is really important. In conjunction with Thompson Rivers University and McMaster University, Corey and the WCS Canada BAT program are testing a treatment for white nose syndrome. It's a probiotic created from four specific strains of bacteria that the scientists have cultured off healthy bats. They're treating bats at a number of study sites in British Columbia and Washington, 
by dusting the inside of their roosts to see if it helps the bats survive the winter. So, so this is a kind of a long-term project, but with a lot of promise. And if, it, if, it, if we do um, feel good that this is saving bats, the ultimate goal would be to upscale this then to other important maternity colonies. Reason for optimism, yes. Yet, even if it's successful, this solution alone can't save all bat species from white-nose syndrome, Corey says. More must be done before it's too late. Now we have evidence our own health is at stake too. For WCS Wild Audio, I'm Dan Rosen. Today's episode was produced and reported by Dan Rosen with help from Hannah Kaplan and Nat Moss. The WCS Wild Audio podcast is a production of the Wildlife Conservation Society. Please join us next week for a new episode and don't forget to rate or review the show wherever you get your podcasts.